Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Hey, good morning, you guys. Welcome to Living Water. So good to see you. Uh, don't worry. I, I'm not going to sing today. I, I, I do not plan on singing today. Uh, so that's not my job, so I'm not going to do it. But I am going to give you just a few announcements real quick. Not many, just a few. Um, our blessing boxes that we packed this Wednesday night, we had, uh, we had a good turnout. You guys really outdid yourself. And we blessed some families this week. Beth received text messages of how thankful people were. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So we're going to keep doing those blessing boxes. We're going to keep having them. We're going to keep uh, pouring into that, helping people out. So I need your help. If you know anybody, if you know anybody that needs help, these don't have to be poor people on welfare. They could just be people that just need a little break. If you know anybody that needs some help, if you know anybody that needs a break, please let me or Beth know. We will get that name down, we will get them a box, and we would love to help out. Who knows it's hard right now? Groceries, <laughs> groceries, is it? have y'all seen y'all's light bill lately? <laughs> so we all need help. We all need help. If you know somebody or if you are someone that needs that help, it's completely confidential. You can come to me and Beth in confidence, and we will get you a box. Uh, we will get you a date for our next packing night if you would like to come and support that. We had a good time Wednesday night. It's, it's, it's something sweet about it. Uh, so, yeah, blessing boxes have been great. You guys, we appreciate the support. And like I said, get us some names. Also, Winterfest is, I think, less than a month away, a little bit over a month, 30 days now. So if you guys would like to give, like to support, we still need to raise about $1,300 more. If you'll just write on that tithe envelope what you're giving to Winterfest, write Winterfest on there. Uh, our kids, you will see a, we'll see a harvest from that. You, the seed that you sow, we will see a harvest for years to come. We appreciate all that you've done already, so thank you so much. And then finally, finally, Miss Elizabeth. Everybody look at Miss Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth is blocking our giving box right now, but she's standing right next to it. She's, you can point it out, Elizabeth, point it out. There's one giving box behind you guys in the middle of the church, if you'll turn around. That's our second giving box. On that giving box, it has a little bit of information. It also has a QR code, so if you want to give through your phone, which is completely secure, you scan that QR code and you can give through Tithely. I can help you with that. Or one of these younger people can help you with that uh, if you'd like to do it that way. If not, on the top of that box is an opening for you to drop your tithe envelopes, uh, monies, whatever. Whatever you, whatever you have to give, whatever you want to give. That's how we're going to do it from now on, okay? We're not going to announce it. We're not going to talk about it. We're just going to do it. Um, so when you come in, as you leave, that will be your places to give. The box have a lock on it. They're secured to the wall. Nobody's going to take it and run off. If they do, if they do, Mike said they better be ready to outrun him. So, and he can run pretty fast. And if you can't outrun Mike, I think we got a few people in here who better be able to run and out outrun a nine millimeter. That's too harsh, ain't it? But that's, guys, that's what we're going to do from, with giving from now on. Um, so, yeah, yeah. If you guys, whenever you want to, I know most of you are seated already, so on your way out, do not forgive, forget to give. Praise God. So that's all the announcements that I have. So we will, I, will, I want to share a scripture with you this morning. And it comes out of Psalm 136, starting with verse 1. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. For his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Praise God for that. Praise God for him. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. There is no other God above him. He is worthy of our praise this morning. He is worthy of our worship this morning. I know no matter what you may be going through. And we've got some people going through some stuff. I know. You can give him worship. You can give him praise. When you don't feel like it. That's when you need to do it the most. His worship. When we worship him. It is sustaining. When we worship him. It gives us strength. When he worships. Him, it can pull us out of that dark place. He is so worthy of our praise. He is so worthy of our praise. 
Amen. Let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you worship, God. We come to you, God, just to say thank you, just to say that we love you, God. We thank you for who you are, God, and what you've done. God, we praise your holy name for the things that you're doing in our life and the things that you've put out in front of us, God, that you have planned for us, God. God, I know you see all these broken hearts in here this morning. God, I know you see these broken people in here this morning, but you call them yours, God. We are your children. You do care for us. You do love us. And no matter what the report says, no matter what the world says, no matter what anybody else said, God, nothing can change that. Nothing can change who you are. Nothing can change your name. Nothing can change what you've done for us, God. We thank you, God. We worship you. We love you, Jesus. If you do nothing else for us, you have done enough. You are enough. God, you are worthy. God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, God. Right now, I pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts, God, to hear your worship, to hear your word, God. I pray, Lord, that you will begin to do something new in us, God. Let us walk out of here changed today. Let us walk out of here better than before, stronger than ever, and feel with his glory, filled with his presence, and ready to go out and make a difference in this world. Amen. Now I want you guys to stand up. Can we give him a shout of praise this morning? Amen. Can we give him a shout of praise this morning? You guys can do better than that. Amen. He is here this morning. The Holy Spirit is working this morning. I believe in God for great things. You guys worship with us. Place to hide this weary soul, this vagabond. And I tried with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, oh vagabond. And just when I Let's 
sweet old solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because He healed my heart and He changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, oh, I thank God. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Now get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Oh, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Oh, get up out of that because he picked. Me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior because He healed my. in the blood. How many is thankful that you're on your way to heaven? Amen. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I'm so glad that I can come and get a dose of the Holy Ghost anytime I want to get one. Amen. I'm so glad I have the freedom to worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus said the day shall come that they shall worship me in spirit and in truth. So if you're sitting in here like a knot on the log looking like you lost your dog, you need to get a worship sense about you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Wandering into the night. Wanting a place to hide. with us.
And you give life And you are love And you bring light To the darkness You give hope And you restore Every heart That is broken And great
chapter 4 in verse 27. Hallelujah. Here's what that scripture says. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that still, still no more. Rather, him that labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Neither give place to the devil. You can be seated. I'm going to talk a little bit about don't give place to the devil. Amen. But before I do, if you can sing with me, I'm going to pull out an old red back. Hallelujah. How many know that our Lord is coming back to earth? How many believe it's not going to be long? How many believe it's not going to be long? 
How many believe he's nigh at the door? How many believe he's got his hand on the door? He's turning that knob. Hallelujah. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be bound. A thousand years will have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Sing that chorus. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be bound. A thousand years will have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back earth again. I am watching for the coming of the glad millennial day when our blessed Lord shall come and catch his waiting right away. Oh, my heart is filled with rapture as I labor, watch, and pray. For oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Sing it with me. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be down. A thousand years will have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back. Come on, let's sing that chorus. Sing it. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be down. A thousand years will have no tempter then. And sky, God shall take away all sickness and all suffering. Tears will dry when our Savior shall come back to earth again. Sing it with me. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be back a thousand years to have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back.
Hallelujah. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tent to live. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. One more time. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tent to live. Satan will be bound a thousand years We'll have no tent to this After Jesus shall come back to earth again How many believe he's coming back? I just wonder, you might want to look at your neighbor and say, are you watching for him? Amen. Praise his holy name. Amen. We are still taking up offering. You can just give it in one of these boxes. we got one back here. We've got one right here at the door. Amen. We're just trying to get the flow of the service a little bit better. Amen. So that we can just stop all this stopping. Amen today, but it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Are you a little warm? A little bit. I don't know about you, but it's hot up here. Amen. I've told you time and again, this, this building, this church is either you're the, you know, you're the cold or hot. It's just one or the other. And uh, we don't like lukewarmness around here. Praise the Lord. In Ephesians chapter number 4, Verse number 27, we, found, we find a profound command. We find a profound statement, an order, an issue that has been given. We all know from reading Scripture that we have an adversary. We have an adversary that from the moment that we were born into this world has made it his personal vendetta, his personal agenda, his personal mandate to get you to his side. The Bible says that we have such an adversary that in the book of 1 Peter, he says that he is as a roaring lion and he seeks whom he may devour. Another scripture lets us know that he comes to, for three purposes, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to completely destroy you and I today. Because we have been made in the image of God. And can I tell you that when you look, when he looks at you, he doesn't necessarily see you, but he sees you as the most wonderful creation that God has ever made. Because we've been made in the image of God. And what is amazing is that all of us look different. Thank God for that. If we all, can you imagine a world where we all look the same. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, you, not everybody can look as good as I do. <laughs> not everybody, now I thought that might get you, you know, some of you are looking too serious today. But then it's, 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 it's a wonderful world in the fact that we don't all act the same. Now you can look at your neighbor and say, thank God I don't act like you. <laughs> I, 
Amen. But you see, we've been created in his likeness. So what do we look like? We look like our father. We look like our creator because we've been made in his likeness. And that shows you the creativity of the image and, uh, and, and the imagination of God because all of us look different, yet we've been made in his image. But in Ephesians chapter 4, we find that Paul, the apostle, encourages the believers in, Ephe in Ephesus to live like redeemed Christians. Can I tell you that once we get saved, we're not all going to have it all together all the time. But overall, we need to act and live like we've been redeemed from this world. Hallelujah. We've been bought with a price. Somebody ought to help me today. We are not our own. We are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that excites me. The day that I asked Jesus into my heart and into my life and he came and made up residence in my life, from that moment forward, I have never been the same. Somebody will look at your neighbor and say, I'm not who I used to be. Glory to God. He has made me a new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Ah. But because we have a new life in Christ, we should live like new people. Not like we did before we were saved. <laughs> That's called good old sanctification. Do anybody know anything about sanctification? That's another work of grace that God does in our life when he begins to separate the cords that we had, the ties that we had to this world. Hallelujah. I thank God I might live in this world, but I am, Brother White, not of this world. Hallelujah. I'm just a pilgrim. I, I'm a stranger. Hallelujah. I'm just I'm just passing through this world. Hallelujah. This world is not my home. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not my home. I know some of you, I think you have, I've lost my marbles. I get it. But I tell you, I've got a no-so salvation. I've got a feel-so salvation. Hallelujah. Listen, when I was in the world, I felt it. But when I become saved, I feel that too. And I'm glad I've got a God in heaven that I can feel that he walks with me. And he talks with me. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to bless him in this place. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, I tell you. I'm glad I, I, I don't have a dead God. <laughs> yeah, somebody look at your neighbor and say, Pastor's off his rocker today. Now, if you didn't say it right there, don't say it later because that was your opportunity. Paul gives us several examples of what it means to live in Christian community. And one of those examples that Paul gives us involves our anger and the devil. Now, as I said a moment ago, ain't you glad that everybody, you don't act like them or they don't act like you? I heard a preacher, I wish I could remember that song, I need to look it up, but it just come to me. And he would get on that piano and he would just peck on that piano. And even though he was pecking, it sounded pretty good. He said, I, I don't fly off the handle anymore. <laughs> Paul here is talking about anger and the devil. And he, he gives this instruction. He says, 
to be angry and do not sin. So it's all right to be angry. Some things are just going to upset you. You're human. Uh, and, and, and some people, that, you ever been around, some, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get right down here where we at. You ever been around somebody and they just rub you all? Hey, just something about them. I, I, I can't explain it, but just something about them that just rubs the wrong way. He says, it's all right to be angry. Just don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath and don't give place to the devil. Now, some translations here for that word, uh, place is meaning foothold or opportunity. The word for place or foothold literally refers to a physical location. In the Greek speaking world, it came to metaphorically mean opportunity, and so the sense in Ephesians 4 and 27 has been said to be metaphorical. We're not supposed to give the devil any opportunity. Watch this. To influence our lives. He should not have any place in our lives because he is an enemy of God and he wants to destroy the people of God. The devil seeks opportunity today to use unconfessed sinful anger to do damage to our spiritual lives. That phrase, give place, is to give the devil, watch this, a platform to further damage to our soul. It's very dangerous this morning to give the devil room to operate in our life. Uncontrolled anger is a foothold, platform, or an inroad to sin this morning further on a persistent basis. The devil will move deeply into our lives if we allow uninhibited anger to dominate our mode of, mode of conduct toward others. Can I tell you this morning that if we don't allow the Lord Jesus to help us and we don't walk in the Spirit, then when offenses come, and they will come, they'll come from the world, they'll come from Christian people, whether, whether or not, let me say this, whether or not it's ever intentional, well, they did that on purpose. They may not have. You know, there are times that we might say something and not mean anything by it, but it can be a hindrance to somebody. It can cut somebody. That's why we must be um, wise as a serpent and harmless as a... You can say what you want to about a snake, but they're wise. They're methodical. And they know what they're doing. And it's easy in this life to get offended, hurt, even get angry. And those things are going to happen. It's unavoidable. However, what we do with it depends upon us. I've heard so many times people say, well, I don't go to church because of this and I don't do this because of that person. But can I tell you, then it's obvious that they're closer to God than you are. Because if they're standing in between you and God, and Paul says, don't give place 
to the enemy. The devil wants to exploit us and get us out of control to where we'll fall for his devices. The Greek here indicates that the believer is to stop an action that is already going on. Stop giving place to the devil. The Ephesian believers had already allowed the devil to gain a foot footing or a foothold in their life by allowing settled anger to rest in their soul. Can I tell you the application that I think needs to be reminded of today is that Satan looks for opportunities to get a foot in the door of our lives. That's why every morning, I, I would encourage you that every morning, even before your feet hit the floor, you ought to pray uh, that God would help you to put on the weapons of our warfare. The armor of God. Can I tell you that as I'm driving, I used to do it with all of them, but now it's just cadence at home and on the way she could probably quote it, and I hope she can. Because I get in that car and I begin to pray and I say, Lord, help us through this day. I plead the blood and I just go on down the line and yes, I plead the blood over you too. Hello, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, Pastor pleads the blood over you. And then I begin to, I've just begun to go down the line. I said, God, give us trampling mercies. Help us to have on our weapons of warfare. Our loins girt about with truth, breastplate of righteousness, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith we may be able to quench every fire dart of the wicked, and taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Then I go on into Corinthians and I say, Help us to cast down every thought and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of you and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Christ. Because here's the deal, it all starts with a thought. In fact, I heard one pastor make this statement. He said, the enemy speaks to the head while God speaks to the heart and the spirit. Habitual anger will afford that opportunity for him. And I'll even go as far as to say this. As long as we nurse hurt and things that happen to us, things that are said to us, how many, how many would be honest today? Let's just let me give your spouse as an example, or somebody in your household or your family. They say something, and and you you'll you'll think about that thing for three days. And if you're like me, Brother Timmy, the more I think about it, the madder I get. And then the madder I get, Brother White, the more I think when I just wonder what I can say or do to get even. I'll be John Brown if they're going to get the last word. Isn't that how we think? They're not going to outsmart me. Bless Pat. Where it's at, <laughs> I'm going to get them. And then if we're not careful, then we'll sit and we'll, we'll think about ways. Hello. I'm talking about a foothold. I'm talking about giving the enemy a platform in our life. You ever heard the saying that an idle mind is the devil's workshop? Put on the helmet of salvation. Do what Philippians says, but to think on these things, things that are lovely, pure, honest, just, of good report. Stop listening to all the gossip. Stop listening to all of the poor mouthing. Stop listening to all the bad mouthing. Stop listening to all of that stuff and guard your mind. Amen. 
I'll even go as far as to say that in your workforce, in your job, if people talk negative and they talk ugly and they talk all grades of worldly talk, cleanse your mind. With the word, don't let that stuff get on the inside of you. Mm. Don't give any place, any place to the enemy. It's impossible. The Bible says that he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. In fact, I want you to go with me to Hebrews chapter 12 today. Go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. In verse number 15, I want to give you another scripture here. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 15. Hallelujah. Praise his name if I can get there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Watch this, the second part, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and therefore, or thereby, many be defiled. See, if you nurse hurt long enough, if you nurse what people say, whether they mean it or not, whether you nurse anger and whatever other emotion that you can feel, if you nurse that long enough, then it will get a foothold into your life and it will open up the door to other things such as bitterness. Smoldering resentment also gives the devil room to operate in our attitude. You ever resented somebody? It gives him a foundation to do damage to our spiritual lives and he will exploit us if we let him. We offer him opportunity to put a throttle hold on our bearing to life. And he can... By this, control our anti and antipathy toward others by using our orientation to anger. Can I tell you something? When something happens to us, if we don't deal with it right off the bat, it will cause us great pain and great trouble. Now, I want to not just talk about anger, but I, I'm just going to talk about anything whether it be lust. Well, it's about to get real quiet now. You know, they, they brought the lady to Jesus who they had caught in the act, and I still, like I've said before, that's still amazing to me because somebody had to be nosy. You ever met anybody that, you know, when a, when a car comes down the road, they, they're looking out the window. I ain't never seen that car before. <laughs> you ever know somebody like that? You know. And if we're not careful, they brought this lady. They said, look what she's been doing. That's back before the days of cell phones, Facebook, social media, where you can just air everything out. Hello, somebody. So somebody had to be standing up at the window. Really, I, maybe they had some binoculars. I don't know. But they were some nosy buzzards. They brought her to Jesus. Jesus just bends down, and he begins to write in the sand. Some say he wrote the Ten Commandments. Some say he wrote, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Some say he wrote, you just name it. But whatever he wrote, one by one they dropped rocks, brick, clay, whatever they had to throw. They just gently 
put it down. Hey, I got to go. I got that. I got that cake in the oven. I got to go. I can't. I got to go. I got to go. See what happens when you begin to to fight all of this sort of thing with love huh. and the peace of God. It, 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 it can't stay around. Resentment can't stay around. Anger can't stay around. Hatred can't stay around. Right? Bitterness can't stay around. But Jesus went on to say that if you look, men, at a woman, and you have some kind of thoughts, and you've committed adultery, do which? What'd you say? All you've got to do is have some some, some kind of immoral thoughts in your mind and you've committed adultery. See, because it's the intent of the heart. Anger, lust, pride. Let's talk about that. Pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before fall, pride is exactly the root cause of Lucifer giving up his heavenly estate. He said, I want to be like the Most High. In other words, I can't take all this anymore. I've had enough of it. I've been standing in heaven all this time watching everybody praise God. Why aren't they praising me? I'm the most beautiful creation to that point that had ever been created. Why aren't they praising me? Well, maybe I should be on that throne. Maybe I should be the one in that position. Pride. Then pride leads to rebellion, and he's able to convince, according to theologians, around one-third of the angels to leave their heavenly estate and we know the rest because the Bible says, I beheld Satan as he fell like lightning from heaven. God said, I'm not going to tolerate that. I'm not going to tolerate that. I'm not going to tolerate an insurrection because it's not going to happen. Let's talk about a moment. Judas. Judas was one of the 12. He was one of the 12 disciples. All of a sudden, something crawled up on to him. And it went unchecked. And the next thing you know, more ideas begin to pop into his mind. And then he says, well, I'll just sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And at some point along all of that stuff that he was entertaining in his mind, when you look at Luke 22 and verse 3, the Bible says that Satan entered into Judas. It did not say an imp. It did not say a spirit. It said Satan entered into Judas. So one thing after another that was left unchecked finally opened the door to demon possession. Well, it's about to get quiet, I know. We find that David in 2 Samuel chapter 11 should have been with his men at war. Rather, he stays home and plays hooky. Anybody ever done that? I'm just going to stay home today. I just don't, I just ain't feeling it. Everybody, anybody ever done it? I just ain't feeling it today. Well, if I went on feelings, I didn't, I don't feel it a lot of times. In fact, I don't feel it about every day. Somebody help me. I just ain't feeling it. Right? He stays at home. Maybe sleeps an extra hour or two and then goes out on the deck. 
And all of a sudden, he sees a lady bathing. And instead of going back in the house, shutting the door, reading the Bible, praying, he lets that image play over in his mind. And then he begins to make inquiry of who the woman is. And you know the story. It goes on to the fact, fact that now then he, he has an affair with the, with the lady who, by the way, was married to one of David's high men. So then, in order, he's got to cover it up, right? I, I've, I've made a mistake. My thoughts led to actions. Actions led to, oh, what have I done? Oh, now I've got to cover this up. He puts him on the hot, hottest part of the Bible. He puts him up front and he puts him in where he knew that more than likely he would be killed and then he would be off the hook. So he thought. God said, what are you doing? Now if I'd been gone, I'd have thumped him right up in the noggin. Bam. This is a man after God's own heart. This is a man that, that, that morally probably was no different according to theologians than Saul. Saul, he just outrightly defied and said, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Sound like a lot of people today, don't it? You're not going to tell me what to do. Bless God, I'm going to do what I want to do. And we like that until we got to pay the piper, but that's the problem. We don't want to pay the piper. We want our cake and ice cream too and not gain the calories and the, and the fat and all that stuff, the weight and everything else. So David thinks he's getting away with it. God said, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm going to charge you with his murder. Do what? I didn't pull the trigger. I didn't put the knife in him. What do you mean? And God lays it out. The first child that they had dies. David repents. But do you follow how that one thought leads to another? leads to another, and when left unchecked, then he began to act on that. Judas began to act on that. They left it unchecked. Why do you think that the Apostle Paul says to walk in the Spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the... Because if we don't, if we don't, and we leave things unchecked, it's like when you leave food out. And the next thing you know, it draws maybe some ants and then some roaches and then some mice. And how many like that scenario? That sounds like trouble, doesn't it? Hello? So it is important when you get done, put your food in the trash. If you don't want rodents and pests, and it's the same thing in our life. If we don't want the end result, which is trouble, pest, Rodents that will eat away at our life. Then we must walk in the Spirit. You see, we cannot give any access today, any place, any place to the devil. I've got to hurry, but I want to give you just a few more scriptures today. I want you to go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse number 6 through 8. He said, he says, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and watch this, be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day, watch here it is again, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation. The context here suggests that Paul was not excluding the literal meaning and implications of the word. 
the phrase, let us watch and be sober, talks about not being drunk. But at the same time, Paul's contrast with physical drunkenness would indicate that he was including the literal meaning of abstinence. But he also says to be alert. And I tell you folks, every day that we get up, we must be alert. Because we have an adversary that does not sleep. Hello, somebody. We must have self-control in every aspect of our life and not get caught up in, in, in the worldly pleasures, in the worldly worries of this life and the spiritual distractions that could cause us to become unfaithful to the Lord and become sleep driven, if you will, in the Spirit, but we must walk in the Spirit. We must be alert of all of the enemy's devices. Can I tell you that the enemy sits back and studies you? How many do you know your spouse pretty good or you know your family members pretty good? You can, some of y'all are afraid to answer that. I know, I get it. But you know them. You know what makes them tick. You know what ticks them off. Hello? You know what makes somebody mad as a wet setting hen. Don't you? You know what buttons to push. And sometimes we as spouses will push the button. I know some of you look at me like, not me. I get it. But you'll push that button. You know exactly what to set them off. <laughs> the enemy sits back and he studies us and he knows us a little bit and he he knows what aggravates us and he knows what might can distract us and what might work for you may not work for me but what may work for me may not work for you. I just want to remind us today that we cannot give any place, not just in anger, but any place to the enemy. Any place to the enemy. Because if we're not alert at all times, he says be sober, be vigilant. That word sober in the Strong's Concordance means to be discreet, to watch. The word vigilant means to Keep awake and to be watchful. So today, in not giving place to the enemy, the antidote for that is, number one, to walk in the Spirit, but also it means to be alert, to be watchful at all times. You know, it's like my home security system I like it because at any time I can click a button and I don't care where I'm at. I can be out of state, out of town, but I can look in my house to see what's going on. I want to be alert of what's happening even when I'm not there. Is my dog chewing something up? Or is he behaving himself? And that's the same thing that we've got to be. Am I behaving myself? Am, am, am I walking in the Spirit? Am I being a, a good representative of what it means to be a Christian today? Or am I giving in to the things of this world? Jesus tells some of the churches in the book of Revelation, you've left your first love somewhere along the line. You started out right, but something distracted you. Something has turned your attention away from me. He told the children of Israel, he said, I must be first. No other gods before me. No other gods. I've got to be number one in your life. 
Can I tell you that's still the case today? He must be number one in our life. I'm going to end with James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. Resist. You see, we can draw nigh to the Father and James gives us how to do it. I'm going to give it to you real quickly. There are five things I want to give you real quickly. Number one, submit yourself to God. That means that you have to come off of the seat of number one. We must realize the need of the Father's forgiveness and be willing to follow Him. And can I tell you, in all of that, we must be willing to forgive others. I know sometimes people do wrong and you want to slap them. Oh, oh excuse me, that was just me, I'm sorry. I wasn't talking about y'all. But we got to forgive. That's another thing that will get us in trouble is unforgiveness. It'll be dirty, it'll be ugly if we don't deal with it. Number two, we must resist the devil, which means we don't allow the enemy to tempt or to entice us. Now that's hard, but it can be done. Can be done. Number three, we must cleanse our hands and purify our hearts, which means to lead a pure life. We must be cleansed from sin and replace it with the purity of God. Cleansed from sin. I'm human. I cannot forgive, but through him I can. I'm human. I cannot love, but through him I can. Are you listening to me? I, I'm human. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, but with him I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With him, you know, in myself, I can easily hate, but with him, I cannot hate because in him is no hate. I wish somebody would help me. It's easy for me to be bitter, but when I'm walking with him, I'm not bitter. Hallelujah. It's easy to be hurt, but with him, he can heal my hurt. Hallelujah. He can help me. He can touch me. He can touch my mind. He can touch my hurt. He can touch my soul. And I need him. I don't know about you, but I need him. Every hour I need him. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. We've got to cleanse our hands, purify our hearts. God, I cannot do this without you. I mean, and I tell you, there are times when you're cut so deep, it hurts so bad. God, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need I need the 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 purify the purification of the word in my life. I need I, I need the purification of the presence of God. I need his blood to help me. Kind of reminds me of a cut. Cadence tickles me because she'll get a cut. And I'll try to get some peroxide and put on it. Oh, no, 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 no. She don't want peroxide. I said, what does it, it burns? I said, peroxide don't burn. I said, you've lost your mind. <laughs> well, it's got all them bubbles. I said, well, it's getting all the infection out. Can I tell you, that's why we need the word in our life. That's why we need the presence of God is to get all of that stuff out of our life that should not be there. So what I'm saying is, is that we need the help of God. You cannot do it. You'll hold, you know, it's easy to hold a grudge. Can I tell you that when we hold on to all this stuff, 
all this resentment and anger and, and unforgiveness and bitterness and hard feelings. And every time you think about it, you want to rip their head off. <laughs> Sorry, I was talking about somebody else. We need God to help us because we'll nurse that thing and become just pure out hateful, rude people. Then we got a, verse 9 talks about, we just need to let there be tear, sorrow, and sincere grief sometimes. Sometimes, you know, and it really aggravates me when my wife says this. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. She says a lot sometimes it aggravates me. <laughs> We be talking about stuff, and she says, "You know, it sounds like to me, you just need to cry one good time." <laughs> well, I'm a man, and the last time I checked, we don't do that. I'm too manly to cry. But you know, brother Tim, what I've noticed is it really does help. When you just get in your closet and you and, and you pray and you say, God, and then the next thing you know, you just feel, I don't know about you, but you just feel his touch. And the next thing you know, you just start crying and it just rolls out like a river. My God, I felt the Holy Ghost right about then. And then all of a sudden when you get done, sobbing, snotting, hello, your tears are just soaking wet. Or your, your cheeks are soaking wet. You got wet on your clothes. And you've been crying and seeking God. It just does something. And then all of a sudden you just feel the healing touch of God come into your life. Yeah. That's why, that's why we need to have some tears and need to have some sincere grief and some sincere sorrow. And let God help us with it. Don't bottle it in. You, it reminds me of a, of a soda bottle. I mean, you, you, you shake that thing up and do like this, and you can see on the inside the intensity. And if you open that, if you open that lid, it's coming out. It's going to blow out, and we're the same way. That's why some of us sometimes we can't even stand our own self because we we just. We're just bottling all this stuff up, and we, we're just, we don't even want to be around us. Now, that's bad when you don't want to be around yourself. How many has ever been that way? Some of us need to let some stuff go. In 2024, we need to let some stuff, in order for God to flow freely in our life, in order for God to anoint us with fresh oil, and for us to be effective in the kingdom of God, we need to let some stuff go. All right. Then he's, number five, we need to humble ourselves before God and allow Him to lift us up. Humbling ourselves means recognizing that our worth comes from the Lord alone. Being humble before God is leaning on His power and on His guidance, and it's nothing on our own efforts. Everything that we have and are is because of Him, His love. His mercy, His grace, His favor. I don't know about you, but I want you to stand. I need that today. I need His grace. I need His mercy. I need His love. I need His favor. I need Him. Hallelujah. Here's what I feel impressed to do. And if you'll help me, I would be so much obliged. But I want you to come to this altar. I want everybody that will to come. I want everybody that will come. Will you come? I want everybody to come right now. And I want you just to get down here and I want you to lift your hands. And I don't, I don't, you don't have to confess anything to me. I don't want to know your business. But I want you just to begin to lift your hands and ask God to touch you right now. 
if you're holding on to feelings, if you're holding on to past things, if you're holding on to things that may be hindering you in your relationship with God, just give it to him right now. Come on, give it to him. Just pray and ask God to touch you right now. Ask him to cleanse you right now. Ask him to help you right now. And ask him to heal you right now. Come on, somebody. Father, in the name of Jesus right now. Oh, God, help us today. Help us today, God. Help us today, God. Oh, God, the past is gone. The past is behind us. The past has no bearing on me currently. It does not determine my worth. But ask him.
give it to you. Yesterday's gone, sweet deep Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. But God, I'm asking you, God, to help us, Lord, to shake it off. God, to give it unto you, and Lord, let you heal us. God, from the inside out. God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, touch your people today. God, with a fresh dose of your spirit. God, a fresh touch. God, of your presence and your power. And Lord, let your blood, God, wash through our lives. God, fresh and new, God. God, in the name of Jesus. Because God, as I spoke the first Sunday of this year, God, I believe you have great things, not just good things, but great things in store for all of us, God. All of your people, I believe this is going to be a great year, God, in the name of Jesus. But God, we can't do that if we're holding on to bags, if we're holding on to baggage, and God, things of the past, God, Lord, that still weigh us down. But God, help us to give it to you. Will you just lift your hand right now? Hallelujah. In symbolism of giving it, and don't just do it, Lord, but just do it with all of your heart. Just give it to him right now. Just give it to him right now because what he has in store for you, you can't take that with you. You've got to let it go. Hallelujah. Give it unto him. Hallelujah. And let him touch you and help you help you move forward into what he has for you. Hallelujah. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Hallelujah. 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 No place. Tell the devil, no place. No place. No place. No more. No more. No more. Come on. No more. Come on. No more. Hallelujah. My God, no more. Hallelujah. No place. No more. No place. No more. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It ain't necessarily that the devil don't want you to be saved. It's just not today. That's his excuse, not today. That's what he wants to keep us bound. All this baggage and all this luggage that we keep, we just keep carrying it around. And it's weighing us down. See, he knows. He may not know specifics, but he knows that God has great plans for you. He wants to keep you bound by feelings and emotions and discouragement and you just list it. Not today. No more. No place. When you leave this place today, you need to keep reminding the devil, no, no more. There's no room for you here. There's no place for you here. I said there's no place for you here. to be your motto this year no more no place no place no foothold here I'm not giving you a platform I'm not going to do it hallelujah hallelujah glory be to God does anybody need special prayer today you need special prayer hallelujah hallelujah anybody else I'm going to pray for my brother right now. I can tell you, I believe in God. I believe God has something for you today, my friend. Hallelujah. Well, I felt that. Somebody ought to help me. Will you stretch your hands this way?
obey the Lord. I know we're getting long in our service, but the Lord's told me this a couple times. So we've, I, I, this hit me the other week. What you do in the physical reaps reward in the spiritual. And I feel like someone here has been battling with discouragement. I'm not going to go to the altar for prayer because I've been a thousand times and God just, it just never seems either I mess it up or the enemy defeats me. I just don't feel like I ever get victory over it. I don't feel like God will do it. I don't feel like I'm just discouraged. I'm just tired of asking about it. But what you do in the physical reaps reward in the spiritual. So stepping forward will be the thing that can bring peace and joy. Jo Jesus is here. His presence is here. And he can touch you in a way that you never expected. It is the spirit of expectancy that brings our deliverance. If you don't believe God for it, it may never happen. But you believe God and you step out and he will meet you right here. Are oh, you Lord? Let's just sing that. Oh, oh. against discouragement we stand against depression and God anything else that the enemy tries to throw at the people of God God we stand against it today and God I just ask God that you will touch every person in this place you know what they have need of you know what they may be battling you know may, maybe what they're going through but God I'm asking you God to touch your people today do what needs to be done and God I'm expecting not just believing, I'm expecting great reports to come. Some have tests this week, I'm expecting great reports, whatever the case be. But God, I'm believing you and I'm expecting in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that today? Are you expecting? Hallelujah. God bless you today. Amen. Uh, did you? Did y'all get communion? Did y'all get it prepared? Hallelujah. Well, let's go ahead and, if you will, we're going to have communion before we leave. Praise his holy name. I made the announcement sometime back. If you will, just pass out the bread, those that want to participate.